Connective tissue. Guess what its job is to do? Connect. To connect things. Exactly. Yes. So it's going to bind together and support. We're going to say it connects things. Now, generally, connective tissue does not have that many cells. They're going to be scattered. So when we were talking about epithelium, they were all cells were all just smashed up against each other. Here they're not. The cells are going to tend to be further apart. And in between them, you're going to have some sort of material or fibers that come from these cells. And then they're going to be suspended in some sort of matrix or ground substance. And I'll talk about what that's going to be depending on the type of tissue. And the matrix is secreted by the cells. All connective tissue comes from the mesoderm. That would be the middle layer in the developing embryo. So think about it. It makes sense. If you're going to connect things, you need to be able to reach the top and the bottom, right? Yeah. So you remember it's in the middle. So some examples, there's lots of different connective tissues in the body. Areolar connective tissue, dense regular, dense irregular, adipose, cartilage, bone, and vascular tissue, which is blood. We're going to talk about most of those. Now, with the exception of cartilage, all of these connective tissues do have their own blood supply. So they do have blood vessels or capillaries so that the cells can be living. So for connective tissue, it's got to have cells because it's living. And then it's going to have these fibers that are extracellular, meaning outside the cells, there's going to be some sort of fiber. And the cells and the fibers are kind of held together in something that's not alive, no cells, and it's called a matrix. Generally, this matrix is soft in our standard connective tissues. It might be, it's going to be firm, but a little bit more flexible in cartilage. Very rigid in bone, because we don't want bone to bend. And again, we'll go over that again more specifically. The fibers that we can have. We can have collagen fibers. Collagen fibers, their job is to bind with water. And that's going to hydrate or plump up the tissue. So think collagen fibers. That's a buzzword in advertising for anti-aging facial products. That increases collagen. And so if you increase the collagen in your face and it hydrates and plump up, plumps up your facial tissue, guess what goes away? Wrinkles. Exactly. That's what collagen does. It's an easy concept. Now, you can also have elastic fibers. Elastic fibers, their job is to stretch and recoil. Think ears. Ears. You can flick your ear and it bends and goes right back. And then you can also have reticular fibers. Reticular sounds like the word resist. So their job is to resist stretch. So they want to hold fast, resist stretch. Now, when we're talking about moving and looking through a microscope at one type of connective tissue to another, because there's not many cells most of the time, you're going to look at the extracellular matrix. So look at what's around the cells to determine the type of tissue. Very rarely the individual cells because they're all going to look pretty similar.
the fibers and the matrix is what's going to look different in these. So our regular traditional connective tissue, there is three types. Areolar connective tissue, this is the most abundant, the most common. It is what wraps up the internal organs. It's what wraps up the outside of blood vessels. Our living cells are called fibroblasts. Okay, they're called fibroblasts because fibro sounds like the word fiber, right? Blast means to form or make, so we're going to call them fiber makers. Fibroblasts, that's how you remember it. So the matrix here is soft, kind of jelly. It's going to have all the fibers, collagen, elastic, and reticular and it's going to be real loose and web-like and kind of like a gel. So it's ultimately soft. Look, you can push on your belly. Push. Push on it. Yes, that's the connective tissue. So you've got some collagen. So, you know, you can plump up, maybe. Um, stretch and recoil. You can push it down. It comes right back up. Reticular. Your organs aren't going all over the place. They're staying in one place where they're supposed to. So that's the reticular fibers that do that. Adipose tissue. What do we call it? Fat. Yes. Now, fat is the big different connective tissue. It is almost entirely cells. 90% cells. In these cells, you very rarely will be able to actually see a nucleus. Pretty much all you're going to see is a lipid vacuole. What's a vacuole? It's just a storage container inside a cell. All right. It's kind of like a Ziploc bag. All right. So it can swell or shrink depending on whether the body is using fat or storing fat. Now, in a human, since this is human anatomy, we form these fat cells before birth, prenatally, and then some during the first year of life. So baby fat is a real thing. It's a good thing. It's supposed to happen. After the first year of life, you're not making any more fat cells. They're just either getting larger or shrinking. That may be good news, that may be bad news. But the living cells in fat are called adipocytes. You can also say adipocytes. Both of those are correct. As you might expect, there's not a lot of matrix because it's 90% cells and it's very squishy. It does have a purpose, but most of us don't like it. So, Last one, reticular connective tissue only has reticular fibers. You're not going to see it very often. I don't think we're going to look at it. Um, but in the lymph nodes, in the spleen, and in the bone marrow is where you'll see that. So if you actually look at it, it's not on one of my slides to show. Next, you can also have dense connective tissue. This is where you're going to have more fibers, less ground substance, so it's going to be less jelly, and then this, this loose connective. So if you have dense and regular, you have living cells, which are still fibroblasts. You have a lot of collagen fibers, not much jelly. Dense regular is very strong, it's inelastic, and it is organized. So regular is organized. And so we'll take a look and we'll see it and I'll try to point that out to you. So regular meaning organized. There is a pattern. This is what's going to form tendons and ligaments. 
So were things attached to the skeleton, either bones attached to each other or bones are attaching to muscles. So anyone ever injured an ankle, sprained an elbow, wrists, know someone who has? It hurts, right? It's not supposed to stretch in that direction. So it's not, it's inelastic. It does not suppose, it's not supposed to stretch. When it does, it takes a long time to heal, but it does heal because it still has living cells. Dense, irregular connective tissue. So it's not organized. There's not a definitive pattern. This is going to be like the dermis in the skin or what covers the outside of the kidneys. So if you're looking at um, a skin specimen, this is going to be what is right under um, the uh, simple squamous. That's going to be dense irregular connective tissue. So you have all the squish cells and then you've got this layer of connective tissue. So the dermis is the middle layer of the skin. It's what shows like when you're rubbing a blister. Turn the page. 